Good morning, everyone. Recording is started. Even before we could start with our session, I would request one of us to please lead us in prayer. He just said. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. Lord, please submit us as a class to your hands. Lord, we pray as we continue to learn from your word. You speak to us, Lord Jesus. Help us to understand the mysteries of your word. We submit Pastor Diana to your hands and we pray that you would anoint her to deliver your word, Lord Jesus. Speak to us, Lord. We uh, humble ourselves once again before your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, each one, for joining in today's session as we are continuing to study on Pollen Epistles. Today, we're going to study on the second letter. Uh, so even before I could start, I'll just project our PowerPoint presentation. Yes. Can we see? Okay. Okay, we're going to start. Uh, yesterday we started with first, I mean, we started with the letter to Romans, and today we're going to start on 1 Corinthians. So even before we could start on 1 Corinthians, I would like to uh, share some information about these 13 epistles, which is written by Apostle Paul. So Apostle Paul had written 13 epistles in New Testament, and these 13 letters uh, that are starting from the book of Romans till Philemon are classified into four groups. Okay, so what are those groups? We have it on the uh, slide here. So the first and second Thessalonians are known as eschatological epistle. These <clears throat> These uh, two books, deals, uh, letters, deals with the last days and it emphasizes on the return of Christ. And then uh, we have Soteriological Epistle. That is from the book of Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians and Galatians. So these letters emphasize on the doctrine of salvation. Well, in in the book of Romans that we studied yesterday, we saw how it focused much on the salvation and the personal life. So in Corinthians, what we're going to cover today, we're we going to see the salvation in the church life. And then in the book of Galatians, which we will be covering in the coming weeks, we see the salvation is by grace. So as we study these just keep in uh, keep in back of your mind like what are these letters denote to us and then we have Christological epistle which is Ephesians book of Philippians Colossians and Philemon so these th uh, these letters mainly deal with the study of Christ that's why they're known as Christological epistle. And these letters emphasize on the person and the work of Jesus Christ. With that, we will move on to the last one, that is the pastoral or ecclesiological epistle, which deals with the study of church, which is that. That is the first and second Timothy and Titus. Okay, so these are the four groups of classification for our understanding I've mentioned. And we will be studying each of these letters, not in the order that is listed here, but according to the order that has been there in our New Testament book. Okay, so yes, as we have studied on the book of Romans today, we're going to start on the book of Corinthians. So what do we know about 1 Corinthians? Anything that we know about the Corinth church, why was this letter written? 
I'm sure each of you all would have gone through your notes even before we could come to the class. So little bit, you can just brush up. If you wanted, you can check your notes and say, why was this letter written? What was the purpose behind the letter for Paul to write? Or anything about the Corinth, Corinth church? This epistle was written to address certain issues, especially First Corinthians. Uh, address certain issues regarding uh, disunity uh, and the operating of gifts uh, in the Corinth church. Okay, okay. Anyone else from the class? In fact, it was his second letter to the college. He was trying to answer some questions they were having in church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the, there were some issues in the church. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Well, we see Apostle Paul is teaching and preaching in Ephesus during his third missionary journey. There were some visitors who arrived from the church of Corinth, a church he had planted in Greece some three years before on his second missionary journey. So there was a group of visitors. Uh, they reported some very disturbing news of factions, immorality, lawsuits within the body of believers. And there was also another group comes with difficult questions concerning marriage and divorce or uh, eating uh, food offered to idols and matters of public worship and the resurrection of the body. So using his God-given power and authority as an apostle, he writes this letter to address their unacceptable conduct and he also answers to their questions. Okay, so with that, we will move on. We will move on uh, to the book of Corinthians. Like, what do we know about the city of Corinth? For us to understand uh, from where these questions arise between the believers. So when we look at the, uh, uh, the city of Corinth, the very location of that city, uh, it was located on the southern Greece, uh, that is about 40 miles west of Athens. And it was located on a narrow strip of land called as Isthmus, where it was formed a land bridge between Aegeans and the uh, Adriatic Sea. And it was considered one of the most strategic cities in its days. Uh, well, we also see Corinth as a city dates back to an ancient times where it was leveled in 146 BC by the Romans and it was rebuilt by Julius Caesar in 44 BC and established as a major capital for all of southern Greece. And it was established as a Roman colony and therefore a model city for Roman rule. So unlike their other Roman colonies, Corinth had a strong Jewish population and a synagogue. So why was it, uh, what was the importance of this city? We see Corinth was the capital city of the southern provinces of Greece called Achaia. Because of its strategic location, it became a major center of travel and commerce. So um, Corinth was a site of a large stadium for athletes and it hosted the second most significant games outside the Olympics. And we see how famous the city was and there was a lot of business opportunities we see in the city. Uh, how do we know that when we go through 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, we see that, uh, can we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9? Verse 24 to 27. Can I request one of us to please read? First Corinthians chapter 9, 24 to 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. 
and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but be for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it to subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Amen. Such a strong verse, isn't it? <clears throat> Even in our days, we can apply this to our daily life. Whatever actions we do, what is the crown that we are striving to run for? Just as the athletes run to win a prize, how about we? Are we running to win that perishable crown? Or are we striving to win an imperishable crown? As we meditate and ponder on that, we also see the unique features of this book. It talks about the Corinth constructed a road to carry the cargo because they had a, a, a major harbor there. They uh, so they constructed a road to carry the cargo and uh, later ships across the isthmus to avoid going a longer and more dangerous way around. So the population of the city surrounding the area at the time of Paul could have been could have been about 7 lakh and it made the uh, largest city in Greece because of its uh, recent history or the blending of many culture uh, because the, it was a business center they had many people come in okay uh, maybe for merchandise travelers sailors um, you know it hosted many cultural people in that place and it became a hotel for prostitution and also for the carnal pleasure a hub for all these immoral activities so when you when we go uh, towards the actual english word for corinthians meaning luxurious which is coming from the reputed lifestyle of the dwellers of Corinth. So the temple which was there, which was a very famous temple of goddesses of love, which is Aphrodite, stood high above the city and also served uh, to fan prostitution. Over about 1,000 prostitutes served in that temple, which was a major source of revenue to the city. And all manner of immorality was practiced in the name of religious experience. And there was drunkenness was also a main activity among the religious ceremonies there. So keeping this, we, we can also see the background and Paul's relationship in this church in Corinth. So Paul founded this church on a second missionary journey in Acts chapter 18, 1 to 8. When we read, we see that Paul found this church at Corinth. And he began this alone in Corinth by ministering in a synagogue. And he started the tent making business with Aquila and his wife, Priscilla. Paul wrote a uh, road out is welcome in the synagogue and started a church in an home that was adjacent there. Paul had good fruit in Corinth, including, uh, you know, Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue. He had more follow up interactions with this church than any other because we see that uh, he had visited this church for three times and he may have sent up, uh, up, up to four letters to the church of which uh, we have only two and the other two, the scholars say that they have lost it. So staying in communication with the church like Corinth would be much easier than with most other cities because of its central location and constant follow up of traffic. We also see uh, what are the other uh, occasions in this letter. We see that Paul had received personal reports and letters that this church was having some problem. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, can I request one of us to read? Chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
Now concerning the things of which, yeah, go ahead, Lubega. John, you go on. Okay, John, okay. go ahead, please. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. So he had to uh, uh, address these issues because of the very nature of that city. It was prone to have many problems in this sexual immorality. So he's trying to address certain issues so that he can put an end, uh, at least in the church, the, among the believers. So there was a blending of many other culture from uh, from the local culture uh, in the church, like other many cultures, like religious belief system or uh, in the nature of the living lifestyle. And there were kind of temptations in the area of morality and you know unusual emphasis on the pursuit of personal pleasure so to put an end is trying to address on these issues so that the believers in the church will understand that the church does not follow the culture or the lifestyle what has been there so the biggest issue that we may uh, see that sparked in this letter is immorality in the church we see that in chapter 5 verse 1 can i request lubega uh, can you please read come again the verse pastor first corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 okay first corinthians chapter Five verse one, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality has, as is not even mentioned, named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife. Yeah, thanks. So what we see, uh, yeah, there are certain things that. Paul is addressing here that a man having sexual relationship with his father's wife or the local church was tolerating these activities and the local church was rather proud that they were so tolerant in accepting the uh, of this brother. So we also see how Paul is trying to address all these areas. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, We have Paul Subhashish. Can anyone take up this verse? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Oh. First Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 3, verses 1 verses 1. Brother, one I four. could not yeah. brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly. Merry infants in Christ, I give you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are you not worldly. Are you not acting like merry men? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not merry men? Yeah. <clears throat> so we see various uh, type of problems where one of the reason why Paul is writing these letters to address them. Well, at this class, it is just a survey. We are seeing the technical side of the book. But then we have detailed study of all the Pauline epistles in our third year. Uh, a detail verse by verse study of uh, Romans all all the 13 episodes will be covering in our third year but this is just a survey we're just looking at the main purpose main idea of the purpose of writing the letter the unique features and the background or uh, background of this place the city or the person Okay, so here we see one of the reasons why Paul had to write this letter is to address uh, certain problems that was there in the 
church when it was trying to go beyond we thought it is the right time for me to address it and bring a, uh, 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 educate the believers so that they can stop doing what they are doing so what were the problems there were some problems related to division strife envy we also see some uh, problem with related to the internal lawsuit the problem of lavish and immoral living or that is the immoral lifestyle that the people from the local culture that trying to bring into the church or the problem related to marriage divorce and remarrying another person uh, it may be uh, uh, so here we see uh, when it comes to remarriage paul is addressing very clearly when you can remarry when you should not and if you get married to a person when your husband is alive or a wife is alive you're committing an adultery so the problem of christian liberty uh, versus license we also see the problem of headship uh, and the covering of ed and the problem of abuse of the table of the lord uh, because that is not the main meal that you come to church to eat and drink but then it is the table of the lord need to uh, be considered in a honorable manner and the problem of the abuse of the gifts of the spirit especially the tongues and prophecies we also see the problem of misunderstanding the resurrection and the return of Christ. So the some of the problems that were there in the early Corinthian church, we also see it happen now. Sometimes it is the history that has been repeated. But then here yeah, we have the answers in the book of Corinthians, how to conduct ourselves and the church. And we also see uh, with that we will move on to the distinct features of this book. So as this book is very important because it gives us a manual for dealing with problem in the local church. The very key verse in this book is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. Can I request one of us to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. By the, by the grace God has given me, I let a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. Yeah, thanks. I'll, I'll read it from the NKJV version. Thanks, Sid, for reading. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one Take heed how he builds on it. Very, very important. This is the key verse in First Corinthians. So the church is to be pure. If it's to be a witness to the world, then it needs to be pure. The unity of the church is critical to the power of the church's witness. We also see as leaders, we need to do more than prayer about problem in the church. So part of Christian love is to confront the problems when they occur. So the individual believers must be willing to adjust with the behavior for the sake of health of the rest of the believing community. And this relates to both the personal lifestyle and the liberties, as well as how they conduct themselves in the corporate gathering of the church. And one more thing is very important, that is the behavior in the church, as it must determine on the basis of love and edification. We see the emphasis on, uh, on, on that, on the behavior in chapter 14, on edification. 14 verse 3, but he who prophesies speak edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Very important. We also see in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 12. Can I request one of us to read? Brother Isaac, Anita, Aradhana, Zeli, Paul. Anyone could turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. 
And one of us, please turn to 26, verse 26 from the same chapter. Even so, you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Amen. Anyone else? Verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you have come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let, let all things be done for edification. Amen. So, we see that, you know, it is so important for of our behavior in the church. It must determine the basis of love and edification. And we see that emphasis of Paul emphasizing on these um, edification in the scriptures that we read. And also this letter is an important, is important because it gives us a definition to some of the most important practices in the local church. What are they? Some things like church discipline. It also uh, uh, addresses on the corporate gathering, the Lord's table, the ministry of the body of Christ. Uh, how do we conduct the gifts of the spirit? How do we handle that? And related to speaking of tongues and prophecy, we get in detail. And it also addresses on some of the important things and it stresses on the Lordship of Christ in our life. So one of the greatest cause of carnality in the life of the believers is not acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus Christ as one in one's life. And this epistle emphasizes on Christ Lordship. How? We see in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to 10, Yeah, the first three verse it greets and later we see the spiritual gifts at Corinth. So we see that six times in this episode, in the first 10 verses, Jesus is referenced with his full title as Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, we see that Jesus Christ in verse 4, uh, you know, the, he, he addresses that way. And with the reference to the Lordship of Jesus are prominent in this book, especially when compared to the other episodes. So the word Lord occurs about 70, 70 times in this book. And this book is an important book because it contains the most powerful description of the love to be found anywhere in the world of history. That is in chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, how a love should be. Can I request one of us to read uh, chapter 13, maybe till verse yeah, 13? One, two, three. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have a gift, have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I, I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to fear to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burnt, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood as a child. 
I thought as a child, but I, when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But greatest of these is love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, John, for reading the complete chapter of 13. Well, it talks about the greatest gift. The very last verse talks about now abide faith, hope, love, and these three. But the greatest of these is love. Well, in this book, where we see the importance and the, the most powerful description of love to be found than in any other book, how love should be. How we can project this true love that God is expecting from us. What is expected from each one of us. Can we uh, implement this greatest gift in us? Yes, we all desire for many gifts. We all desire, uh, you know, uh, like the gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, many gifts. But then what is important? If we do not have love in us, then what is the point in we flowing in all the other gifts? Very clearly, Paul says, the root of every gift should be the love, the love of God, because God is love. We should have the love of God in us. Even in the Gospels, we see that Jesus moved with compassion. He moved with love because God is love. Only when we have this love of God within us, we can love others because that is one of the commandments that Jesus gave. Love yourself. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. We need to have this love within us. Only then we can. There's also, uh, let's look at the other uh, key verses. Uh, chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Amen. Yes. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Very true, because there was a lot of confusion uh, was happening in the church, and that was the result of so many problems. So here Paul is addressing, God is not the author of confusion but is of peace. We also have another key verse, chapter 4, verse 5. Therefore, just nothing before the time, until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts, then each one's praise will come from God. Amen. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsel of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. These are the key verses that we looked in. And I would request you to please go through the outline of the first Corinthians. And yeah, with that, we will end this book. Is there anything that you would like to share about the first Corinthian church? Yes, tomorrow we will continue. I mean, not tomorrow, the next class, we will continue on the second Corinthians. I didn't want to rush up. But then, yes, we can study each letter one by one in each class so that we can um, cover and ponder on each letter well. Well, uh, what we see in this letter is the city of Corinth with this, uh, you know, with certain behaviors which was not pleasant, which uh, related to the immorality, idolatry and all the ungodliness uh, just like our current days or in our own cities, with many 
opportunities to indulge in sin without any visible consequence but then as a community clearly had a bad influence on the corinthian church so we see here paul instructing to the believers in the church so this instruction we can relate it yes he was instructing to the believers at that time but then today based on our own uh, situation or based on our own time we can also relate it to us and we can see how we can bring correction in our own self and in our church as well and he encourages us to grow in commitment and faithfulness and shine a light brighter in midst of the darkness that we are living in he is also encouraging us through the letter to settle all our problems internally and continue in the path of purity we may uh, it doesn't sound as easy as it has been said but then yes it cost a lot of discipline paul is saying that in uh, in the letter like you know the things i didn't want to do i land up doing it but then by the grace of god i'm able to do what i can do and with that he also says that imitate me as i imitate christ there's uh, no man or anyone can say that because he has disciplined himself in his daily life from his thoughts from his words from his actions the way he led his daily life he led it to be an example to another person he disciplined himself to the core So today um you know as we study on these letters i would like to ponder and i would like to uh, uh, encourage each of us to ponder on the lifestyle of um, you know uh, the apostle who lived for jesus like how he disciplined himself in his daily life how we can uh, continue it is a process purity is a process how we can purify our thoughts our words our actions and how we can bring a correction in our church in our own self or what can we do uh, when there are certain issues similar to the corinthian church in our own church what can we do within our church community to make our church the way paul intended us to be no i i leave this question to each one of us let's ponder let's ponder how we can bring correction to ourselves and in our church if there are any situations that even we are facing let's meditate on this letter and pray and ask seek god you know in a in in a loving manner we need to correct each one in a loving manner not be harsh not being rude but in a loving manner bring the correction out so i leave this session open to our class you all can add or share something that we all of us may learn from it please go ahead is there anything that you would like to share had or ask any questions um just remembering what you also mentioned during the class uh, even when we operate uh, with the gifts of the spirit i think chapter 13 is sandwiched between um 12 and 14 where it, uh, paul explicitly talks about the gifts of the spirit and it also reveals to us how important it is to have the attitude of loving people and um not to uh, not to operate gifts to make our own benefits or any selfish attitudes but to love people and to minister to them thanks yeah thanks thanks john yeah very important very important anyone else what was our learning zeli aradhana paul Prada Abu Bakr, we've been quiet for a long time. Would you like to share? You can add to what we learn from this letter, First Corinthians, maybe from today's class, or something that you already know about this letter that you can share. Said.
okay next class i would encourage each one to have one point that you learn from each book so i leave it with you so second corinthians we would be covering in the next class i would encourage each of you all to please share one point that has touched you from that book from that letter okay been said that uh, we are nearing towards a mid term exam okay so you have to write a summary on each book so till what we have covered i would request you all to write from the book gospel of matthew gospel of matthew to yep uh, to the letter to the galatians okay i would i would request each one to write a summary on these books okay uh, we will extend to colossians by this month we should cover i would extend it to colossians i would request each one to please write a summary on each book individually and submit it you need to upload it on the google classroom i would be creating it okay you can upload it on the google classroom just like how we did in the previous semester i would request each of you all to please write a summary individually please don't copy paste what is there in the notes but then you need to write your own personal understanding your own learning even if it is few points even if it is 5 to 10 points from each book i would encourage you to do so okay write in each uh, gospel wise or the book wise each like matthew talks about this mark luke john go each book by book i want you to write down uh, it can be in a word doc form format or in a uh, powerpoint presentation format please start preparing uh, the end date for this assignment would be give me a minute i'll tell you um yeah 28th of feb okay so you have almost 2 weeks okay 28th of feb after which your assignment will not be accepted is that okay is that two weeks time period fine with everyone class yes ma you are okay with that okay okay so we are covering 3 12 12 books we are covering till then okay matthew to colossians we will cover we need to write the summary of them and upload the presentation or in a word document or in a ppt format on the google classwork yeah with that we will end this session thank you so much uh, can i request one of us to please dismiss us with a word of prayer Anita would you like to pray or aradhana okay zeli would you like to pray and dismiss us please show me yeah father god we come before your presence in the name of jesus we thank you so much for the wonderful session that we had we had this morning lord father whatever truth that we have learned from the book of first corinthians lord help us to apply that in our life also and teach us all this truth lord and you continue to guide us to bless our pastor and bless each one of us lord in jesus mighty name we pray amen. amen thank you so much for joining in god bless see you all next week yeah thank you Thank you. Thank you. God bless.